What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again today bringing you guys another preseason fantasy football preview here at the wide receiver position. And today, guys, what we're going to be talking about is fantasy points per reception leagues. These are the PPR leagues that you hear about. If you're not familiar with the concept, essentially what a PPR league is, is that when a quarterback throws a pass and your player catches it, you get one point automatically for that one reception. So let's say it's a 10-yard completion, you get one point for the reception, and then in addition to that, you would also get one point for the 10 yards that are accumulated. So instead of a 10-point a reception being worth only one point, it actually becomes worth two points. So you can see how when players are catching passes and the guys that catch 100, 120 passes, they start to become more valuable in these points per reception leagues. It adds a lot of value to the wide receiver position, which does kind of drop off in your standard scoring leagues, uh, given the fact that they're not scoring as many touchdowns typically as the top running back on the team. So it just kind of helps balance things out a little bit. And that's why I actually prefer points per reception leagues. Now, if you're not in a point per reception league, I do have a video previously that I posted yesterday that you guys can go ahead and take a look at and that will break down the top 10 receivers on my list for standard scoring leagues or non-PPR leagues and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. We'll also be popping up a few annotations here to bring you to some of the other positions that you might be interested in taking a look at. But with that being said, guys, let's get into the top 10 players. Starting off at number 10, and we have Chicago Bears wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey. And Jeffrey takes a two-spot drop here in PPR formats from what he was at in standard scoring, but I still absolutely love his potential. Now, Jeffrey made 89 catches this past season despite a merry-go-round at the quarterback position. And the only real concern is that with Jay Cutler behind center, uh, there's definitely no doubt that Jay Cutler prefers throwing the ball to Brandon Marshall. He, he's he been with Brandon Marshall for quite a few seasons uh, with, with uh, having that experience with him in Denver prior to them playing together in Chicago. But still, Alshon Jeffrey was productive with, with uh, Jay Cutler at quarterback. I think a lot of people for some reason have this perception that Alshon Jeffrey did absolutely nothing with Jay Cutler, and that's not the case. Cutler actually played in 10, realistically 10 full games. Uh, technically, he actually played in 11, but will not count the one where he only threw like three passes before he got hurt. So in those 10 games, Alshon Jeffrey had over 900 yards receiving. So if you point that out for a full season, you can see that he is definitely on pace to being a very, very excellent fantasy football wide receiver, even if Jay Cutler is the team's quarterback like he's going to be. So I definitely like Alshon Jeffrey. I think that he is one of the guys who has a, a real shot to hit double-digit touchdowns, and I fully expect that he's going to catch somewhere between 80 to 85 passes this season. He's a low-end wide receiver one with a little bit of risk just because of the whole Jay Cutler situation, and you never really know if Cutler is going to go down, and then if Cutler goes down with an injury again, what are you going to do? But the skills are there. The Chicago offense is going to be great, and Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey should have absolutely no problem putting up beautiful fantasy numbers for you. Moving on to number nine, and this one is kind of interesting because gone are the days when Andre Johnson was the top fantasy wide receiver on big boards, but there's no reason that the veteran wide receiver from Houston can't be an elite fantasy receiver still. Despite having some absolutely horrendous quarterback play, Andre Johnson caught 109 passes for 1,407 yards this past season with five touchdowns. The only thing holding Andre Johnson back is that he's never been much of a touchdown scorer. Now, granted, some of that might be because he was playing with Matt Schaub, who realistically isn't an elite quarterback, but his best season ever is only nine touchdowns. So... That's a little bit of a concern, and he's actually only scored 11 touchdowns over the past three seasons combined. But still, Andre Johnson's yardage and his reception totals are absolutely among the very best in the history of the league, and even with a new quarterback situation in town, I fully expect that Andre is going to be in there to produce a really nice season for fantasy owners. I like him as my number nine fantasy wide receiver here in PPR leagues. Next on my list is a guy who takes a little bit of a drop here in PPR rankings from where he was in standard scoring leagues, but Jordy Nelson of the Green Bay Packers is still a very solid wide receiver one heading into the 2014 season. He caught 
85 passes this past season despite Aaron Rodgers missing almost half of the year. Now, Randall Cobb is expected to return and be perfectly healthy, and that could mean that Jordy Nelson does get targeted a little bit less, but I also think that Jordy Nelson's quality of targets is actually going to go up. I think that he's going to have a higher number in terms of the yards per reception that he gets this year, which still makes him an excellent fantasy option. I do expect that he's going to be somewhere around 80 to 85 catches this year, so that's still solid, but the touchdown total could go up, and the yardage total could actually go up as well. Well, so I do really like Jordy Nelson, even in PPR formats where I think he kind of doesn't really necessarily have the potential of catching the 100 passes like some of these other guys do. Next on the list is a guy who really broke out this past season when Mike Wallace left to Miami, and that is, of course, Antonio Brown. Now, Antonio Brown quickly secured that spot as Ben Roethlisberger's favorite target, and he is absolutely one of the best PPR receivers in the game. Brown caught 110 passes for 1,500 yards and 8 touchdowns in 2013, a total which saw him outscore the likes of A.J. Green, Brandon Marshall, Calvin Johnson, and Des Bryant in PPR formats. Now, I do think Brown is a good bet to reproduce the numbers that he had this past season, but 110 receptions might be a little bit high. If he pulls in 100 passes, though, I do think that 1,300 yards and 6 or 7 touchdowns can be expected and that would still make Antonio Brown an elite fantasy wide receiver. The problem is, is that he just doesn't quite have the touchdown upside that some of the guys ranked above him do, so I just have kind of an issue with ranking him any higher than number seven, but still, I'm very, very happy if Antonio Brown is my number one fantasy wide receiver going into the season in PPR scoring leagues. Moving forward to number six, and despite being one of the most hyped receivers in the league early in his career, Julio Jones actually only caught a total of 143 passes in his first two seasons combined. But Julio got off to an insane start to the 2013 season, catching 41 passes in just five games before being knocked out for the remainder of the year with a foot injury. The run that he was on would have put him on pace for 131 receptions, which would have been by far and away the most of any player this past season. Now, we certainly can't expect that he's going to stay at that kind of a pace, but at the same time, I still think that Julio Jones will be much closer to 90 catches this season if he stays healthy, and if you combine that with the fact that he has a legit chance to contend for the league lead in receiving touchdowns, you have an excellent fantasy wide receiver. Julio does have a little bit of an injury concern, of course, but I think that the high-end talent and the fact that the Falcons are going to throw the ball a ton this season, makes him a great option here in fantasy football. I like him as my number six fantasy football wide receiver in PPR leagues. Next on our list is AJ Green of the Cincinnati Bengals, who made 98 and 97 receptions over the past two seasons. Now, Green brings the kind of elite level consistency that fantasy owners typically can only dream of. The only concern that I have about AJ Green is that the team promoted their running backs coach to be the new offensive coordinator this season, which could lead to a higher than usual amount of runs, especially if we consider the fact that they drafted Jeremy Hill to be a compliment for G- Giovanni Bernard early in the draft this year, so I expect them to run the ball around 400 times this season, and if they do that, that's going to mean less passes for Andy Dalton to A.J. Green. Now, A.J. Green still has the skills to make the best out of fewer targets and still be an elite fantasy wide receiver, but I just don't quite like him as much as other receivers that are ranked above him because I think that those guys are going to have more opportunities. That's the only thing I don't I don't question A.J. Green's abilities at all, and he and if he's my wide receiver one going into 2014, I, I am absolutely ecstatic about that. I think A.J. Green is an amazing player, and as the number five fantasy wide receiver, I absolutely love him. So let's move on to number four, and that is Des Bryant. Now, Des Bryant has made 93 and 92 receptions over his past two seasons for a total of 2,600 yards and 25 touchdowns. Those numbers are amazing on their own, but it's actually my belief that the Cowboys are going to be passing more than ever this season as they try to keep up with opposing offenses who are going to be scoring and scoring and scoring on that horrendous defense. And that could mean great things for Des Bryant because it could very well mean that he's going to go over 100 receptions for the first time in his career. And if he does that, guys, he's going to put up monster numbers. 
Des Bryant is an absolute beast. He's a monster in the red zone, puts up double-digit touchdown seasons, and that's really hard to come by. So I love Des Bryant to improve on what he's done over the past two seasons where he was already an elite-level wide receiver, and that's why he's my number four fantasy receiver in PPR leagues going into the 2014 season. Next on the list is Chicago Bears wide receiver Brandon Marshall, who excluding his rookie season where he and Jay Cutler weren't starters in Denver's offense, Marshall has had at least 100 receptions every time that he and Jay Cutler have played together. He even hit that number this past season despite the fact that Cutler missed a number of games with injuries. So Marshall is definitely Cutler's favorite target and the bromance between the two of them continues to thrive in Chicago just as it did in Denver even as Elshon Jeffrey becomes a bigger and bigger part of the offense. Marshall might be the best bet of any player to get 100 catches in this season and I think it's fairly safe to put him as the number three fantasy PPR wide receiver as we head into 2014. Now, the top two guys on my list, I I have a very tough time differentiating the two of them because I look at Demarius Thomas, my number two fantasy wide receiver of the Denver Broncos, as kind of being almost a 1B in my rankings more than I do as him being the number two player on the list. Thomas has gone over 1,400 yards in each of his past two seasons with Peyton Manning while scoring a total of 24 touchdowns with 92 and 94 receptions, respectively. Now, with Eric Decker gone and Wes Welker potentially set to miss a number of games due to the concussion he suffered in Saturday night's preseason game, Demarius Thomas is really the only wide receiver in the offense who has significant chemistry with Peyton Manning. Thomas is my wide receiver too, like I said, overall, and I would really have a tough time arguing with somebody that wants to put him over Calvin Johnson as the number one wide receiver. He is absolutely that good. He's in arguably the best offense in the NFL. They set the record for points last year, and there's really no reason to think that they won't be amazing again this year. Demarius Thomas is going to have plenty of opportunities, and he is going to put up huge numbers this season. Absolutely love him. I like him even as a bottom-end wide receiver in the first round if you can take him. So definitely consider that. I think people might be overhyping some of these running backs here at the end of the first round, and you can lock up an elite fantasy wide receiver in Demarius Thomas if you're sitting there at 9, 8 even, uh, 10, 11, 12 in your fantasy league. I definitely like Demarius Thomas in those areas. So Final player on this list is a guy who is, in my opinion, pretty much the prototype for what you look for in a wide receiver, and that is, of course, Calvin Johnson. Megatron has been absolutely absurd over his past four seasons. He's averaged 95 catches for 1,564 yards and 11 touchdowns per season. He is truly the best wide receiver of this generation, and defenses just do not seem to have any answer for him. As long as Matthew Stafford stays healthy, Calvin Johnson is pretty much a lock to be one of the top fantasy wide receivers, and that's just something you cannot overlook. He's my number five overall player, and I could see him being drafted as high as number three overall in fantasy football PPR leagues, so I don't really have any problem with that. I think that he, like I said, he produces at such an elite level, and he's the kind of guy who really could contend as one of the top overall scorers in fantasy football this season. He approached 2,000 yards receiving just two seasons ago, and honestly, there isn't really any reason to believe that he couldn't do that again. Matthew Stafford looks for him over and over and over and over again every single game. He's always one of the top targeted players over the course of the entire season, and he, with his wingspan, his skills, and now even the addition of Golden Tate, who I think is probably the best wide receiver two that he's ever played with, despite the fact that Golden Tate really isn't that good. Uh, Understandably so, I understand that. But he is still the best, in my opinion, that Calvin Johnson has ever played with. And I think that that's going to mean some improved targets for him. I think that he has the potential to put up, again, high double-digit touchdowns. I wouldn't be surprised to see him at 14, 16 touchdowns this year. He'll be near 100 receptions like he usually is, and the yardage total is going to be impressive as it always is. So I love Calvin Johnson. Like I said, he's my number five overall player, and I don't see any reason why people would not have him as either the number one or number two fantasy football wide receiver in any scoring format. He is just an absolute beast. 
So guys, with that being said, that is going to wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you press that like button. And if you have comments or questions, leave those below as well. I want to hear what your top 10 fantasy wide receivers are. Did I miss somebody on the list? If I did, make sure you leave it in the comment section below. But the only caveat to that is that if you're going to tell me that I missed somebody, you have to tell me somebody that I knock off the list in their place. I have a lot of people who are asking me, why isn't this guy on the list? And then I ask them, well, who would you knock off? And then they don't really have an answer for that. Well, guys, if you're going to put somebody in your top 10 list, somebody's going to have to get knocked out. Think about that when you're commenting below. I want to hear what you guys have to say, though, like I said. So make sure that you leave the comment below. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, make sure you press that subscribe button because I'm going to have a ton more fantasy football content this season. And I cannot wait for Madden 15. I am very, very excited for it. There's going to be a ton of videos coming out on my channel as soon as that game drops this Tuesday. So make sure that you guys step, stop back here if you're a fan of Madden. If for whatever reason you're only a fantasy football fan and you somehow stumbled upon my channel, welcome. Again, make sure you press that subscribe button because I will have more fantasy content for you as the season goes on and still continuing here in the in the preseason so that we can analyze what is going to happen before your drafts. So thank you guys again. I do appreciate it. And I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.